Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video is going to be a video uh, similar to my most popular video that has like 55k views now. This is a more like updated, uh, up to date version of it, um, in my opinion. Now it's been quite a long time since I made that video, but before we get into that, uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel, uh, like the video. And uh, if you're interested in being a part of my Discord community, the links are in the top of the description. So yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, so I'm going to be using uh, Weaponcraft's tutorial uh, area, which I made myself. Um, obviously, since this isn't my game, I'm not going to show anything like the UI, the scripting and stuff like that. Because, you know, I didn't make it. I don't really, you know, want to uh, annoy anyone by showing that kind of stuff off. Uh, also, the demo of this game is available if you're interested in that. Just type in uh, Weaponcraft uh, in uh, Roblox and you should be able to play the demo. You also get a reward out of it, so yeah. But yeah, so the uh, first tip I'd recommend is so, as you can see, this is a tutorial area, right? So, uh, the player is only ever going to be in this section. So, what's outside it, you know, he's never going to walk around. So with that in mind, um, obviously you want to make the world feel bigger than it actually is. Obviously this depends on what kind of game you make. But for example, this is an RPG game. So this is kind of like an open world. Um, so obviously since the player is going to be here, he's not going to be able to see anything else. So I created this kind of uh, castle gate which is um, which leads to one of the big castles in the game. So it kind of makes sense. Uh, which I'll, uh, I've shown off previously on my channel, which I'll probably put up a screenshot on the screen so you can see how it makes sense. You know, it links to the original game again. And then, obviously, there's an invisible wall here, so you can't travel any further, but there is a road that curves around, as you can see. So, a lot of people don't do this, which I don't know why, but... Um, as you can see, if I look, this is kind of like the furthest point you can get because the invisible walls block off around where the fences are. So as you can see around here, you can see that the the, uh, the road is still curving. So in the player's mind, he's still going to think that there's something over there when in reality, it's just this, which makes the, uh, the world feel a lot bigger than it actually is. And it's kind of more immersive for the uh, player. Um, Obviously, this is very optional. Um, it just depends on the, the kind of game you make, but it, it really adds kind of like this this uh, immersive feel that the world is a lot bigger than it actually is, which uh, you know may uh, may make a lot of people find the game more enjoyable and more pleasing to look at. Another thing I'll mention is good use of particles. For example, particles that make sense. So in environments, you're gonna have your falling leaves, as you can see here which it just builds the uh, the ambience of the uh, the scene really well also gives the false illusion of wind because you know the uh, the leaves are blowing kind of this way um, but yeah this is really really small detail but adds like a lot in terms of ambience because when you walk around if leaves can kind of fall at you you know it kind of brings the the world to life if that makes sense you know there's um there's stuff like realistic stuff going on around now I don't think I mentioned this before but um, usually what I do um, in RPG games probably more than any other game um, obviously I've got my uh, different types of uh, elevation in the terrain which kind of adds like verticality into your uh, environments even though you're not going to be able to travel around here but essentially what I do with the trees as you can see the smaller size trees are kind of around here um, just to not overwhelm the player with like ginormous trees like the ones at the back but obviously the trees at the back if they are small as you can see if I reduce these it kind of just you know it opens this whole area up here now this may not matter if the um, if the environment's not like a, a forest or whatever but um, I think like enclosing the player into this uh, set environment kind of just immerses the player in the environment they are in currently. As you can see, 
if I add these back up, it kind of closes in the um, the environment, as you can see, because there's less kind of gaps you can see through. Another thing I'd mention is people often put um, invisible walls just straight into the game, you know, which is fine in some cases, but um, realistically, there's nothing to sh like show that is blocking the area off. For example, if you show invisible walls here, it's just going to ruin the uh, the immersive experience because you know you you want to travel and then it kind of just stops you here because you can't move past the invisible wall. But for example, using specific assets to um, symbolize or give the player the idea that you know no you can't go past that point it kind of um you know it it builds onto the environment and it kind of makes sense in putting invisible walls for example what i uh, what i did here is you get your well, i've got my fences here and uh you know if you're playing around um i'm not gonna play it because uh you know the scripts and stuff that run but um, essentially, you know, you look at the fences, you can clearly tell, right, you know, I can't go past that point because it's blocked by fences. And obviously you add the invisible walls just so the player just can't um, travel past that point. But the fences are kind of there to indicate that, you know, you can't go past, if that makes sense. So, you know, it, with each kind of like non-realistic input you put into the game for like invisible walls or something you know put something there to signify the player that they can't go there or they can do this or they can't do that if that makes sense the final point I would make is uh, an optimization based point um, so obviously people create environments and stuff like that but you know you, you when you start placing uh, stuff down you may even use kind of like that paint uh, plugin tool which allows you to kind of just paint assets across a thing Obviously, that's cool, but you know, to be more optimized, for example, for like an RPG game, the world's going to be quite big, so you want to be more optimized, have less assets on your scene. You want to kind of be smart about your map design. For example, adding uh, huge trees around the outskirts of your map kind of blocks vision for most points. So, for example, as you can see here, I'm not sure why these rocks are here. I don't remember placing them here. But this is kind of like, you know, just a waste of, uh, you know, triangles at this point. The player's not going to see these. So why are they there? It's like the same as, um, you know, you kind of grab your plant here. And you want to go ahead and, you know, just add plants across this, uh, this cliff side. Which is cool. Um, but... You know, you wasted your time there because, you know, this big tree is kind of covering uh, that whole hill part, which you may only be able to see at this point. Um, so it's like, when it, wherever you don't need to put assets, just don't put them there because it's just a waste of, like, uh, you know, good optimization, I suppose. But anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I hope this little video helped out. Um, if you liked the video, make sure uh, to go ahead and like. Uh, also, subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to reach 10k. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.